Well, today's interview was with the reigning, defending Sun Belt Coach of the Year, a guy who was the captain of one of the best win-loss turnarounds in the history of college basketball. So with all that said, I'm so honored to have Southern Miss men's basketball coach Jay Ladner on. And coach, how are you doing, man? Marchant, I'm just – I want to pay that back because I'm honored to be on your show and what's really become, I think, for people like you and I and and thousands of other people that just bleed black and gold, your the the growth of your – your 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 podcast and your show has just really been something to behold. It, it reminds me of the rise of the Southern Miss athletic program, you know. And and uh, so anyway, and I think a lot of people, of course, are tuning in. And you know, had Sammy Winder on here. You know, that's gosh the leap. You know, I, I was there. Yeah. I was there. So for me to to even be on the same show, I mean, I I don't know with you. I mean, gosh, they, you know, it's it's a. Uh, I, 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 it's just beyond belief. So I'm honored to be here today. No, I, I appreciate that so much, Coach. But, you know, all the stories, the things you did with the 1987 NIT <laughs> championship team. I was being a, a bad member. player on a good team. Get out, get out. Hey, like I said, <laughs> we talked earlier on my show when I did your whole story, but there's a picture of you, man, with, with the quad and the little shorts. I'm like, I'm like, man, I need to do lay work outside Coach Ladder, man. Oh, Don't man. lie to me. You were a bad man back in the day. But Coach. <laughs> Coach, you're hitting on something, too, right there. You know, you hear you're a Southern Miss guy. Certain people get that. When people yeah. talk about you, Coach. You are a Southern Miss guy. I've joked, if you bleed, I promise. I, I just think black and gold comes out. It, Am I lying? It, it could. Am I lying? It could. It does. Yeah. It does, Coach. But what does Southern Miss mean to you? Well, it you know, it's it, it, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for this institution, um, wherever I am, uh, personally and professionally, I wouldn't be. I mean, it it it's so deep. It's it's really unbelievable. Um, just just growing up here in Hattiesburg, of course, I grew up at exactly the time that Southern Miss Southern Miss went Division One in 1971. Had an incredible tradition prior to moving into Division One, and uh, of course, we were known as the Southerners back then. And um, a couple of national championships. Y'all had some of those guys, football guys, on on your podcast. Yes. Uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, October 25th, going to have some members of the 62 National Championship. Yes, team okay. So I know you yeah. had done – I didn't uh, – but that hadn't aired yet. Right. They'll be coming out. I know I, you saw me tease it a little bit, but it's coming. Yeah, there it's you coming. go. Right. Thank so, you, Coach. So you had some of those great, <laughs> those greats on there. That shows you how much I'm keeping up with this. And – uh and and so, but but we we moved here. My dad was a high school basketball coach, at, and and he's from down in Hancock County. But he he began his coaching career in P at Picayune High School, Picayune Memorial High School, and uh, and and anyway, and and so about that time, of course, eating up with athletics, no matter football, basketball, baseball, you just played whatever sport, and 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 then to move into a a, a town that had. Um, uh, major college athletics happening, you know, I mean, I was just eating up with it. I mean, I, I remember growing up, my dad would take me to baseball, y'all's football practice field, Marchant, next to the old Van Hall was our baseball field. And that, I, I still remember seeing Corky Palmer. He was one of my favorite players. He was a catcher. I, and I'd always kid with Coach Palmer. I'd get down in my catching stance, even, even when I was here, you know, and show him how he used to get so deep and low in his stance. And uh, but I, I would know all those old guys, Wilson Plunkett and, of course, Ray Guy. I mean, these were these were guys as a little fella that I mean, I just these these were gods to me, you know, at that time. And and then to see our football program, I remember in 75, we didn't have they were redoing M.M. Roberts. They were expanding M.M. Roberts Stadium and we didn't we weren't able to have a home game that year. And one of our home games played all on the road, but the homecoming they had at Biloxi High School Stadium on the coast. They had a large high school stadium, um, not 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 like City Park where y'all you, you and Jesuit and Holy nope. Cross would tear into it in front of thirty thousand. But it was a large high school stadium, and that's where our homecoming was. Our quarterback was Jeff Bauer, so I spent a lot of time out in the in the backyard with my buddies, and I would be Jeff Bauer, you know, because he was my he was my hero. So. That's just that's just how I grew up, and then to see our program um, just just get better and better and better to the point that Ole Miss and State refused to play us anymore 
because of the success that we had against them. And that's just a fact. That's a known fact. And, and, uh, and, and then it, to get here in the eighties and, and of course, through your time into the nineties and in the 2000 coach Bowers reign, um, uh, coach Hallman, coach Carmody, in football, of course, Coach Turk's great reign in basketball, Coach Denson in baseball. It was a great, great time to 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 lead into it and then to be a small part of it. My mom and dad both worked here. My brother played football here. He was a center in 89 through 90, uh, three, 88 through 92, uh, played on the football team. Um, my sisters went to school here. I mean, it, it, and my mom and dad, like I said, both worked here without this, my, uh, Jennifer, uh, my wife, of course, was a Dixie darling here and, and Kyle May, I, I wouldn't be here. So, so it, it, it's just meant the world to me and I, I want to give back and, and there's nobody that wants to see our programs all across the board succeed more than I do. And in the fact that I'm in charge of the basketball program, I can tell you this. I know we've got some hardcore fans out there, and there's some people wanting my head sometimes. But I can tell you what: it doesn't hurt it. It it it, it doesn't hurt them near as bad as it hurts me when Southern Miss doesn't be successful. And you see why I led that in with Jay Ladner's a Southern Miss guy. I mean, you, you just you went off on the '80s Eagle Fever on why this <laughs> man. I, 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 that's why I talk. I, love, I just love talking, to you, Coach. I love talking. Yeah. I wish I lived in Hattiesburg. I'd, I'd bug you all day. Not we'd, be where, I, we'd be wearing. We'd be wearing you out with lunch this. every day. To, 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 talk about <laughs> old war stories. Oh man, but let, good ones. Oh, I, I, we, I've heard a lot of them, and I know yeah. you have plenty more. But Coach, I, I do want to say something. You got on last season. You know, you're in a high pressure situation. It's head yeah. coach. You know, it comes with a job and. And last year, you'd be the first one to say it before last season. You run hot seat. Is there any sugar coat now? <laughs> I don't know if hot is even. I wasn't enough. <laughs> look, I can't curse on your show. Of course, you know you being a good Jesuit guy, and uh, I, you know, uh, I, you know, I didn't curse. I, I, it was hotter than Hades. Let me just put it that way. It was hotter than Hades, and I get it. And and you know what? If and I, I would have been the first one that if I if we if if we would not have been successful last year, I, I Jeremy McLean, first of all, who I, I I'm very appreciative to and and forever indebted. I'm I'm indebted to Joe Paul. I'm indebted to Dr. Bennett. They gave me an opportunity uh, to be the coach here. But had I not been able to get it done, I, I would have stepped away. I, I just I said, you know what. I love the program and the school too much, and if we not can't get it done, but I will tell you this. Because I'm competitive, I have pride in myself. I got pride in my, our program and the school. I said, if we don't, we're gonna do, we're gonna go down swinging. I can promise you that. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and get 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 uh, pushed up against the wall, and not fight back. And I uh, felt like that was what our situation was. And um, heading into the season, of course, there were a lot of doubters and 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 so forth. But the very the the transformation happened the, the year before, and not even after the season was over. I, I said, you know what? This isn't working the the way that we've gone about it. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna evaluate every single aspect of the program, Marchant, starting with me. Not pointing fingers. It was nobody's fault. It wasn't assistant coach's fault. It wasn't our players' fault. It wasn't the school's fault. I've heard all the excuses. Excuses. We don't. I don't. I don't make them. Nor do I accept them. I wasn't going to accept them starting with myself. And and I said, you know what? But we're, we're going to turn this around. But we also have to be – we got to change. We got to change our approach. And like I said, it started with me. The Lord blessed me with uh, a great coaching staff. You've already had Coach Cardone on here. Juan, uh, uh, of course, is, has been incredible. But Nick Williams and Zay Carson on the right and, and the rest of our staff – all formed a, a kind of a hey we we circled the wagons and said hey we don't have another plan I, I think Juan probably told you that on your show when you had Juan on here we don't have a plan B now and and I was very upfront with all of them that fellas if we don't if we don't have a sense of urgency and we don't get we don't get this done by next March we don't have a job and 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 that's the attitude we've continued to take is that. There's no we 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 we're not satisfied. We yes, I'm happy, Marchant, that we were 25 and eight, biggest turnaround in school history, selling out the Coliseum again, great atmosphere. I'm I'm happy with all that. But you know what? We fell a little bit short at the end, 
and and we didn't make the NCAA tournament. And I want us to get where we're a perennial NCAA tournament team. Did we go from step one to 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 with five being the max? Did we go step one to step five? No, we were a little bit short. So now we went from step one to four, maybe. Now the next step is we got to get in that NCAA tournament. So we got to figure that out. We got 13 other schools in our league don't want it to happen, and they're going to fight like heck to do the same thing that we're trying to do. And uh, But I think we're well positioned now to to compete for that uh, championship every year and getting in the NCAA tournament. That's what our goal is. So, yes, we're, we're highly motivated, um, uh, unfinished business from last year, and 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 yes, we're we we were on the hot seat. And you know what? I'm gonna keep that same pressure on my staff and myself that we're gonna operate like we're on the hot hot seat every single day, uh, because there's a great motivation if you have some pride in yourself as a man and as a competitor and as an athlete. There's a great motivation there that hey, if I don't get it done, it's, it's do or die tonight. If I don't get it done, I may not have a job tomorrow. So that's the kind of attitude we approach every day with. Oh yeah, coach, and then you hit on your your assistant associate head coach Juan Cardone. I had him on my my show this week or past week for a reason. I I just wanted people to see the blueprint in an environment where you and I have been told for a long time. You just heard it. We have no money, don't the facilities. Yeah. You know, we don't have this, we don't have that. The blueprint for what Coach Ladner did for turning things around in one year, it's right here under our noses. I could give you all the examples. Sit down and talk to Coach Ladner in an environment sometimes where you want to make excuses or not. You, yeah. you, you, you pump energy into the program. You say, not today. I'm, I'm handling my business and nobody's going to stop me. You do it, believe, Coach. I've, I've said that so many times. You, you, what you did last year being the captain of the ship, the blueprint for a one-year turnaround is right here. But I know you're not happy with last year. I didn't. Well, no. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. and, am, I, am I happy that I've got a job? I'm, I'm thrilled because yeah. this is the job. This is I'm, – I'm, I'm, I'm living a dream. Every single day I get to come to Reed Green Coliseum. I'm living a dream. But I can – and because and it, it means more to me. I'll, I'll say that. I, I may not be the best coach. We, I, I, I'm not the best coach that's ever been here. I will not be the best coach that ever has been here. But I can tell you this, it means more to me than it has any other coach. I, I will tell you that. And we're going to pour – and we are pouring and did pour every bit of hard, sweat, hard work, uh, everything that you can pour into something to, to, to make it better. Are we lacking some things? Yeah, absolutely. But you know that going into it. You don't, you don't come to Southern Miss – thinking that, you know, it's going to be this, this, and as you come to Southern Miss knowing that despite that, we're still whip you behind. And we've got a heritage and tradition. And you know what, Marshant, sometimes it works. That 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 works against us a little bit in the fact that there's expectations here at Southern Miss, despite maybe not having the resources that some other people have. That but we still figure a way out. That's that's what we called our players. Ask Marchant when you come and we want you to come speak to our team just like you did last year. Very soon. I'll be honored. It was so much was, fun. When, yeah. So much when, fun when, I want you to do that because your your personal story, as I've told you, I know I'm getting off, but your personal story to me is is incredible and it's it's motivating. And 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 the fact that the things that you talk about because of your proximity to Hattiesburg from New Orleans, I can relate to, I, I can, you know, I, I can understand it. And so uh, you have such an incredible story for how you've made the man that, that you should be. And you've had some people in your life that helped shape you, your you're nun, the nun. And uh, what, by the way, what's her name? Marsha? Mar Mr. Francis. She's still Sister kicking Francis. up in St. Louis too. Man. I, I would <laughs> love to meet that great lady uh, if, if she's available to do that. But, but anyway, that's a, that's a different story, but yes. And, and so when you do that, that's ask our players when you meet with them, well, you know, coach Ladner talks to it, has asked me to ask a question. What's the Southern Miss way. And they'll tell you what the Southern Miss way is. Uh, Austin Crowley, who went to Ole Miss, he's going to tell you what the Southern Miss way is. And that's scrappy, blue collar. We don't – yeah, we're going to operate first class, and we do. But 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 by the same token, we're, we're the guys – we're the guys that did not in the country club. We, we're going to whip those boys from the country club. That's – we're going we're gonna to associate with those guys. And that's just who Southern Miss is. And uh, and we'll, we'll do it with a little bit less. You don't have to have – all the bells and whistles. When it comes down to winning a football game, it's those guys that are tougher and you win in those trenches and the guys like the old nasty bunch that you were part of just freaking knock your freaking head off and enjoy doing it. 
And the same thing with basketball. That's the mentality we want to have. We want to have that old nasty bunch mentality defensively pressing you. When you get off the bus, we're going to dictate where your locker room is. We're going to dictate how you play. And then at the end of the game, yeah, we're going to be good sports. We're going to shake your hand after we, we're kicking you in the tail as you walk back to your locker room. That's the mentality, old toughness. That's what the Southern Miss way is. And that's why you call Coach Juan Cardona your defensive coordinator. Who I does that in basketball? Because, I mean, can you imagine, <laughs> Marshant, could you imagine, and you played for some some really good defensive coordinators, some defensive-oriented guys. <laughs> but, you know, you used to see these the, – or I would from the from my – spot in M.M. Roberts, I'd see that defense coordinator. He was motivated, you know, and <laughs> and, and slap, grabbing face mask and shaking them up, you know, that type. And they seem to just have that extra fire about him. So I just said, well, I know this is really not a basketball term, but you're our defensive coordinator. You're it because Juan, wouldn't Juan be a great football defensive coordinator? Well, I, I had him on us, and you, when you first introduced us, I'm like, Coach, I'm, I'm run through a wall for that guy. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, okay. So he's energy, that guy. You can't Ag- be down with him around you. you can't no, be- aggressive, <laughs> aggressive. You want guys that are extremely hyper aggressive, you know, uh, but also uh, in a, in, you know, still have the smarts about it, not just running out going the wild. And I think Juan, to me, when I started thinking about his role, I said, well, that's perfect. You know, he's, he's our defensive coordinator. So hopefully football won't get mad at me for using, uh, using <laughs> no. that term. No, we love that coach. And, and one thing I love you guys synergy when I'm watching a basketball game, I mean, you're obviously the, the captain of the ship running things, but am I wrong every now and then you're like, all right, let me, let me let coach Cardona kind of get near a no little question. bit, get going. And you kind of stand back and, you know, they, they might need a little, a little card because he's unique to college basketball. I, man. I kid, I kid with him. Uh, <laughs> I was kidding with him last week. Of course he's, he's out there and we're waiting on our guys. We, our guys lift this time of year as we get in season, we're considered in season in our strength and conditioning program. And so they lift every day before we practice and that's their lift and warm up all at the same time. And, uh, uh, Shout out to Tony Bratovsky, our strength and conditioning coach, does an incredible job. We have truly one of the best strength and conditioning coaches. And I, and I hope you other have an ounce of listen. body fat on him, too, man. What, what, Unbelievable. Yeah, guy. So, and he, so he does yeah. a great job. So I'm kidding. So Juan and I are kind of waiting on the guys to come out of the tunnel. And we're standing at half court, you know, as the guys are starting to trickle down the tunnel out of the weight room onto the floor. And, uh, and of course, I, I saw Coach Juan, you know, just kind of – he was kind of quiet. I said, Juan, I'm a little concerned today. And, you know, he – oh, yeah, what's wrong, Coach? Something wrong? I said, well, I'm just – it doesn't look like you got that fire in you today, Juan. I don't <laughs> – of course, he fussed out laughing. He said, Coach, what are you talking about? He said, the day I don't have any fire, he said, you can fire me. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, but he's like that every single day. He's a joy to – he's, first of all, has, has become a, a close personal friend – but a joy to work with. And again, when I tell you uh, that I have a hundred percent confidence in, in what he does defensively, it makes us unique in our league. We're different than other teams, which is some of the, one of the parameters that I gave to Juan when I told him, I said, I want us to be different. I want us to be the hardest team to prepare for in our league. Uh, and, and and he's delivered on that. And he's brought a, a unique style and system uh, to Southern Miss that that fits with what we have, you know. And, for instance, the, I use y'all's football analogy. I think going back to the late 70s when Coach Collins was here, Coach Carmody was our defensive coordinator, it seemed like he took the meanest, nastiest dudes on the roster, no matter where they played in high school, you know, what they played, position they played in high school, they found those 11 cats first that were, it looked like they let them on, out, of, out of jail from Van Hall on a Saturday and said, go get them, go sick them, because it was unbelievable how aggressive our football teams were defensively and – just nasty, and that's how they, of course, how they got the nasty bunch moniker, and uh, and 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 Juan instills that same type of attitude, and in, in in our defensive style. So I have so much uh, uh, confidence in him that when it's his portion of practice, of course, I run the offense. Juan runs the defense. Nick and Zay help us in in in, in on both sides, uh, and, and Juan helps with the offense too. And of course, I'll help with the defense. You know, and when I see things that need to be clarified, but for the most part, I allow Juan to coach. Um, uh, and I think that's also a way that he feels valued here. And I know that if we continue to have the success that we've had, 
Of course, there's going to be some suitors. There already have been uh, coming in here trying to uh, uh, pick Juan off. And again, at some point, Juan Juan is a head coach, and that's going to happen. And I'll be there will be nobody happier for him because I know what that's that's his ultimate goal. People watching this, that's why I keep saying the blueprint for turning things around in a year when you have everything stacked against you, you know, and, and I appreciate you tying my story a little bit right there because, you know, it's I had awesome. every, everything stacked against me at 12 years old, just about everything you can think of. So, but I had enough people with belief and purpose that wouldn't let me get off my path yeah. to the point where I see through people who don't believe in what they're saying, who don't, you know, who, who just don't say it with a sense of urgency that's why I love telling your story, what you did last year. Everything you say, it's with purpose, direction, belief. It's, yeah. it's, 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 this is what it is. It's the blueprint for how you turn things around in one year. And I keep saying, and I joke with Angela, you heard us. I mean, they make a movie, Coach. Hollywood, <laughs> the last season, that magic. Uh, and, we, and we've still narrowed it down to like a Kurt Russell type guy to play. It would be, it would, Marshall, it would be <laughs> one of those stories where, you know, you hear the Hollywood, they put all this money into it and nobody goes to the movie and they lose all this money. That's probably what it would be. But, it, it, it you know, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I, I This past I, – I made the mistake, or or maybe it's good fortune, several years ago uh, I told Jeremy McLean, I said, Jeremy, I will never turn down an opportunity to speak if somebody would like me to speak on behalf of Southern Miss, whether there's two people or 2000 people um, help promote the university, our program, I'll do it every time. Of course, I can't be in two places at one time. And then after the turnaround last year, I've spoken to Alabama's high school coaches, Mississippi's Louisiana's Iowa's. I was a national uh, speaking clinic in Chicago, another one in new Orleans and another one in Philadelphia, Mississippi. That's seven. I think, right there. I've got another one scheduled and every one of them say the same thing. Coach, how did y'all turn it around? And and again, I didn't become this all of a sudden this smarter, any smarter than I was the year before. Didn't really know more about any more basketball than I did the year before. But the only thing that I, I would tell our people or, or certainly anyone else that was watching that I was intentional I said, one, I'm, I'm going to do it my way. If I go down, I'm going to go down swinging. So I've got some personal pride and fight about myself. And I said, I'm going to make sure that I'm intentional about getting good people, first and foremost, coaches that are good people that I like to be around every day. Not that we didn't have them before, but I, that was intentional in terms of who I was going to hire. And then players who I, I wanted to walk out of the office, walk down, walk in that tunnel down, out on the floor, who I enjoyed seeing every day. So good people in our program that formed a family, and, and it worked. And, and I think if coaches, if high school coaches were in the same situation or college coaches, and they would start and, and look in the mirror first and say, hey, what do you got to do better as a person talk, talking about pointing at myself? I've got to do this better, this better, and this better, and then be intentional on getting – Nick Saban says it the best. You got to get the right people on the bus and the right seats, but you also have to get the wrong people off the bus. And uh, there's there's a great uh, 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 truth to that, and that's kind of – that's really all I did. Like I said, I'm no smarter. In fact, I'm probably not very smart. But, but that was the only thing that we did that was intentional. We didn't go down to uh, – Camp Shelby, you know, it's a military base south of Hattiesburg for people that are out of town. We didn't go down there and spend a week out in the woods and have this big kumbaya type deal and haul logs around. And, you know, we didn't do any of that. We didn't do any of that. We just we just got the right people on the bus and said, let's go down to basketball court and let's go. Let's start putting in some sweat equity and some hard work and the rest of it to take care of itself. We were very no, simple when it came to that. I, I love that, Coach. And it's with a sense of urgency. Before we get kind of a little on the court topics and talk about this year's team, uh, Angela, my wife, and I were able to stop at practice last week, and everything's with a sense of urgency. She got a yes. kick out of it. Somebody fell on the floor. Some sweat got there. I mean, the equipment, <laughs> many, the equipment managers – ran like their lives depended on it to wipe that up and get off the court. I was like, even, even yeah. the equipment managers. They, they <laughs> have some fire in their tail. Those guys Ooh. do a great job. And you're right. There will be six or seven of them diving on the floor <laughs> and, and getting that sweat up uh, if when a player falls down, you know, of course. And it, it's encouraging because it's everybody, Marshan. You can't win with just a couple – a coach or two. Everybody – 
the co the coaches, the strength. We've already mentioned strength and conditioning, the medical staff, the trainers, managers. Everybody has to be bought in to this La Familia deal, and 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 so everybody has a job to do, and those guys are expected to do the job, and they do a great job. They they really do. Oh yeah, La Familia is a beautiful thing, man. And uh, let's get kind of this season, Coach. I mean, you had some key losses though with DeAndre Pinkney, Denajay Harris, and Felipe Hase. I mean, how big are those losses? How do you see replacing that? Huge, huge losses. We, you know, those are big, big shoes to fill. And gosh, I have a big smile on my face thinking about uh, the the ability to uh, the honor of coaching uh, Felipe and DeAndre and Tyler Mormon. Nico Aguirre, Marcelo Perez, they were just great young men. All five of them graduated. All five of them have great University of Southern Mississippi degrees, and all five of them are, are have professional contracts and are doing incredibly well uh, uh, in their professional endeavors. And that that's 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 makes my heart warm. Um, big shoes to fill. I really like our backcourt. I really like uh, Mo Arnold's back. Of course, Austin Crowley, preseason player of the year. Uh, Neftali Alvarez is back. We signed a young man named uh, Andre Cabello, who 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 possibly could be an All American. He was projected to be an All American uh, his second year at Illinois before he 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 had a, a severe bout with some concussions. Um, Kobe Montgomery's a young man that set out last year. Uh, I think he's really going to surprise some people. One of the better athletes on our team and can really shoot it. A tough kid. He he's a Southern Miss guy. Didn't come from a lot. Oh, I like him already, but, Coach. I like oh, him already. Oh, man, hey, he's, <laughs> hey, we could put him over on our defense and put over at M.M. Roberts right now. Trust me, he would put a hat on somebody, as those old football coaches would say. He'd go get it. And uh, so he's got that that type of physical toughness. Of course, Jeff Armstrong, I think, is the best utility man in the country. Of course, he's back. And But our, 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 our front court, Filling those holes is going to be the deal. And, and we've got Tegra is a big seven footer, gives us a different dimension that we did not have on our roster last year. Victor Hart, who has shown as a returner from last year, sign, flashes of brilliance, very most athletic big that we have, very versatile, more along the lines of Pinkney, of Pinkney and Felipe, uh, of, of the of the newer bigs, Bryson Hall. Of course, and then and Victor Waco. I think Victor Waco is a, he's a former top 100 player out of high school. Spent two years at Oklahoma, signed with him out of high school, uh, two years at UNLV, and of course he's here for us as a graduate student. And uh, uh, he he's he's the, he, right now. Of course, the league doesn't know it yet. He's the most athletic forward in the league, and it's not even close. And uh, so excited to see what he can do. Of course, uh, had another seven footer, uh, Lee Biath, that just had ACL surgery. That was a surgery uh, uh, injury that he had coming in here. And then, of course, Tate Ryder and Trey Alfonso. Of course, my son, Luke Ladner. I, I hope I haven't left anybody out. I think I've covered everybody on the roster. Donovan Ivory. Donovan is going to play a little bit of three and four. Donovan's had a great offseason for us, too. He's poised to have a great year, and I think he's a potential all-league player. So I hope I've covered all 16. If I didn't, I didn't. I left somebody out just because I'm doing it off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure I covered everybody. Um, <laughs> That's why I know I didn't go into – you have to go in too detail because you, you, know, <laughs> you know, fill in the blanks, Coach. Fill in the right. blanks. But speaking of your son coaching him, man, what this what what a great young man. And when we went to go see practice, he made it a point before practice run over. Hey, Mr. Marshan, shake my hand and get back to practice. So you, you're raising him right. That, that was awesome. Hey, my dad. Well, I appreciate that. And of course, you know, you're a Jesuit graduate. I went to Southeastern. My respect for Jesuit high school was such my first year at Southeastern, we worked it out where my son Luke went as a ninth grader to to Jesuit and a uh, little too much for him, but an old Mississippi boy, you know, and ended up going back to St. Stanislaus to graduate. But whether, whether he plays a minute for us or a thousand minutes, real proud of him and type of character young man that he's, he's grown into be. It's just got to be a special time with your son on the team, but what a great young man you raised right there, man. Thank you. And, and coach real quick, I want to talk, give you, give you a chance to talk about one of the most important things people can be doing right now. What do I do with my money with Southern Miss? Tickets, you know, Eagle Club, all, all this stuff is very important. But, you know, give me a chance to talk about NIL and whatever else yeah. you feel like, hey, this is yeah. we got to do this in this new new day yeah, and age of college not, basketball. It's not coming. Uh, it's here. And uh, it, it, it if we don't embrace it quick, uh, then we're going to be competing against the teams that don't have NIL because that's what it's become. And uh, I, there's no other way to say it. Whether you agree with it, don't agree with it, you know, because there's there's different opinions out there. But it is here, 
And uh, it's unfortunate that I think that NCAA laid it all on us like that without regulation guideline, but they did. And uh, and we're forced to just kind of figure out how to go about it. But it, it is here. The mo- here Here's way people ask me all the time, Coach, how can we help the pro- – I like what the programs do and how can we get involved. Well, fir- first and foremost, buy those season tickets because – if you happen to see, I was at media days yesterday and I, and I actually put it out. If you happen to see the Arkansas state uh, 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 broadcast or, you know, of their part of media days, I didn't, wasn't even aware, but they asked the, the young man from Arkansas state, they said, what's the toughest place y'all play inside the league. And he just started, man, it's Southern miss. It's Southern Miss. So our people, our energy, impact winning buy those season tickets and of course that helps the bottom line of the university and of the athletic department and it helps our program continue to grow we can get more and more uh advanced so to speak and 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 you know the way that we travel and all so if you wanted to really really help us that's one way second of all you can join the hardwood club the hardwood club all a hundred percent of your dollars that go to the hardwood club help us with special projects throughout the year uh, upgrading our, our, I mean, I can, I could give you 10 of them things right now are the hallway from the, from the entrance down to the floor, totally redone with hardwood club funds. The, the weight room totally redone with hard club, hardwood club forms. Our, our, our technology inside of our study hall uh, up here for the athletes, totally redone with hardwood club funds, locker room, coaches off all that kind of, I mean, I could go on and on. So that's what those special type projects that aren't necessarily built inside the budget are directly from hardwood clubs. And like I said, it's a hundred percent. And then the big one, the most impactful thing that you can do for our program is now begin to think about putting some money in the to the top collective and earmarked for men's basketball. Let them know that, Hey, this is for men's basketball. And because that's what recruiting has become. And well, again, whether you'd agree with it or not, it's it, it's it, if we can have a certain budget that we can count on. And we had a great tip off celebration event just a couple of weeks ago, just incredible. And uh, that that we can count on every year uh, to to help us with our budget. That's what recruiting to come in and, and, and recruiting has become. And in the in the spring, uh that that will need that money to be able to say, okay, we need to get us a Marchant Kenny, you know, to come in here. But this is what it's going to require. The stuff that used to be Marchant, to, sad to say, kind of under the table is now not under the table. It's now it's now rules and red. That's the way it's done now. And uh, and 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 so, our, our, anyone that can help us out there, please consider helping us because it it is the, it, it for our content, our program to continue to fight for championships and NCAA tournament we absolutely have to have a strong NIL budget you hit it perfect coach that's whether you like it or not being a fan of southern miss that's the landscape coach that's landner landscape. hit it perfectly and and i guess a big example i might be able to give i mean going to my senior year you know i'm a southern miss guy I remember all this stuff i got to be honest it would have been very tempting if somebody offered me a load of cash, maybe to go over here, you know, I'd had a long talk with Coach Byron and kicked me to shape, and I stayed yeah. here. But I'm just saying that's that's the landscape. And, and Marshan, I don't blame the players at all. No, I mean, no, yeah, I'm like you. If, you. if you, especially most of the players that play college football and college basketball, a lot of that's the same demographic. A lot of times come from don't come from a lot of means at home, right? And if you were to offer me thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to go, or in 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 some cases a lot more. <laughs> to go play somewhere, that's where I'm going because who knows what the future, who knows if you're going to get hurt or whatever. And, you know, so you, you take that while you can. My, my problem was the, the people that should have known better that how, how, how this was going to work out that should have known better. The people that were being paid to know better allowed it to just go out without, I mean, it's just like throwing a young boy out there with no sense of discipline guidance you know, forming boards or whatever, he, he's just going to be all over the place. And that's, that's, and until he learns some hard lessons and that's where we are right now, because it was just put out there without any type of guidelines or regulations. No, absolutely. Great way to put it. And, and uh, I just can't offer enough, like a guy like even me, you know, I'm thinking of a Southern Miss guy, but I was on welfare and grew up in a boys home before I got the boys home. I didn't have a dime to my name. So 
you know, just if somebody would have offered the you hundred thousand dollars, and another group would have offered you five thousand or nothing. Where are you going? You know, it didn't matter. And you may have loved the school that offered that that this, didn't offer you anything. But th- your decisions made. That's that's exactly in a simple way what we're dealing with. There you go. Your yeah, coach Power would have kicked my ass though, and maybe <laughs> Sam Power. <laughs> so, but coach, let's get back on the hardwood as, as we start wrapping things up. And great message right there. But this schedule is pretty exciting early on. And, Coach, I laughed with you at the 80s party recently. I said, Coach, there's an exhibition charity game coming up on October 29th. Exhibition charity game with Mississippi State in town and NCAA team. Coach, exhibition charity game at Reed Green on October 29th. Well, well, it is is an exhibition. And against Mississippi State, it's the 29th, October 29th. Uh, that, that that is not part of the season ticket package. It can't be because it is for charity. Uh, the, the tickets are the exact same price they would be for any game. We're challenging all of our season ticket holders to purchase their season ticket for that particular game. We hope to have a sellout. The 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 charity uh, is is a charity that that impacts the um, uh, Mississippi Delta that is helping to rebuild from the tornadoes that hit that area so hard, one of the poorest areas in the country, and it hit that area incredibly hard last spring. Great, great charity and, and, and you know, for us to be able to partner with um, for all the proceeds uh, to be able to go to that. But the fact that it's Mississippi State, it's a 2 o'clock on a Sunday, uh, it will not be treated on their end nor ours as a charity game. So you're going to see both. And, and, and I think it's great for us to play. I, I see a lot of the Mississippi State certainly going to be a top 25 team uh, to, to start the season and a, a really, really good team. I'm appreciative of Coach Jans. I want to say that publicly for being willing to do this and come to Hattiesburg. They haven't been to Hattiesburg since 96, and that's when Mississippi State uh, went to the Final Four. And uh, – and so it's been a long time. We've only played them twice in the last 27 years. So it's exciting, and hopefully we can we can fill up Reed Green because what it generally happens when Mississippi State plays here, they bring a lot of people, and uh, and and I don't want that turning into a Mississippi State home game. You heard the man, Southern Miss fans. I mean, I know it's an exhibition charity for a great it, cause, but man, exhibition on paper only. On paper only, I like That's that. Right. And maybe DJ Cujo in there too with the band. Man, in here. That's right. I, Coach, I, I am a big DJ Cujo fan. Yeah. I mean, that's my guy. Great ambassador for Southern Miss Energy. We need all that stuff. And, and Coach, one other game too, uh, December 23rd down in Biloxi. Yep. Ole Miss, my favorite team. <laughs> Y'all, you guys you know, are playing yeah, and, and, Mississippi you know. State, uh, and of course, <laughs> on the 29th, and then Ole Miss on the 23rd. And, you know, I, of course, being a Southern Miss guy, those games mean a lot. You know, those schools have a big advantage of us over us in every sport, you know, with the advent of the SEC network and all that. And that's all good. But I still think it's great for basketball. It's great for just overall athletics in Mississippi for the schools to play each other. I wish we would play each other regularly in all the sports. Um, and of course, that that'll be tough. Chris Beard's a great coach. They've got it. They're going to have an outstanding team. But to play in play in Biloxi, which of course has been a, a, a great place over the years for Southern Miss to play games, um, uh, is has been very exciting. And the feedback that we've been getting from people about that game, just like you're mentioning, has really been uh, nothing short of incredible. So I, I, of course, we're expecting a big crowd there as well. Oh, yeah, fun games on top of the Sun Belt schedule. And, Coach, before we wrap things up, I mean, let's just call it what it is. I mean, me included. Football's performance right now is is literally tearing the Southern Miss soul out of me. It, and I'm speaking for a lot of people, and a lot of people are looking for, for a light from you guys. There's just a lot of turn towards basketball like I've never seen. So, Coach, if you don't mind just giving a message to the Southern yes, Miss we, we love Coach Hall. He's a personal friend of mine and the football staff and, and, of course, our players. And I know they're having a rough go. And I, if I could tell them anything, just hang in there. Keep punching. Don't, don't, don't ever lay down. Don't ever quit. That's not who we are at Southern Miss. Keep battling. And, uh, of course, we, we, we're pulling for you and got their support. And with, but with that being said – you know, we welcome – We welcome. Uh, it's not going like they want it to. I'll say first to say that. It's not going like our football people want it to go. But basketball, we're going to be ready to accept the challenge. And and uh, we appreciate people looking our way and giving us some hope. We talked to our players about it, that the university needs us. So you you get your butt in, in, in another gear, whatever that gear is. It's time for you to get, it in, get into it because uh, the school really, really needs us. 
And uh, so I hope our football team can turn it around. I really do. Nobody pulling harder for than them. And like I said, those are personal friends. And uh, and I think they will. I do. Um, but but we got to take we got to look at our side, too. And, 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 and again, there's just an added dimension there of, of of delivering. We need to deliver. And uh, and, and that's going to happen here within a couple of weeks that that we're going to be prepared to do that. Awesome message, Coach, right there. And fans, get to read Reen Coliseum. As you know and I know, we've been to a lot of arenas in, in America. You've been to more basketball than me. But when Reed Green is packed, they're in a louder, more intimidating environment. It's just the way it's built. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So get to Reed Green, man. Cheer this team on. So, Coach, I mean, from the reigning, defending Sun Belt Coach of the Year, it's such an honor to have you all, Coach Ladner. I'm honored as well. All right, Coach. Well, I think I'll – What's that, Coach? I was just going to say thank you again for having having me, Marshant. It's a great honor. I'm a great admirer of yours personally, and uh, I appreciate what you're doing on for Southern Miss and Southern Miss Athletics. Oh, yeah. appreciate you, Coach. When I hang up, I'm calling Hollywood to make that move. I'm, I'm calling Asia real quick. So, But, Coach, I, I think what everybody would like to see to close this show from two Southern Miss guys, giving everybody a big Southern Miss. To the top. To the top.